ese. Ok. All right. Um, <coughs> so again, thank, uh, I want to thank the organizers for uh, for the opportunity to speak here. It's uh, it's a great pleasure to be here in Sao Paulo. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, factorization algebras and uh, certain constructions of vertex algebras that arise from them. And um, so factorization algebras are. Uh, the formalism I'll be using is due to uh, Kevin Costello and uh, Owen Gwilliam. And uh, this was a, a formalism that was introduced to capture the structure of uh, observables in, uh, in quantum field theories. So before defining these things, uh, I just wanted to start with uh, kind of like they do in their book with uh, a little caricature of field theory to kind of motivate where this uh, the structure comes from. So this first part is, is meant to be only uh, kind of schematic and not, uh, not too precise, but just to motivate uh, how one would come across a structure like this. So if we're doing uh, field theory, whether classical or quantum, the one starting point is... Uh, um, as follows, so we have some some manifold which we think of as uh, space time, and uh, <coughs> we have um, we have a collection we have some space of fields. So these uh, might be sections of some graded vector bundle over M. And <coughs> we are given an action functional which uh, goes from fields and to a field that, uh, to a configuration that uh, it returns a, a, a real number, which is the action. And uh, so if we're doing classical field theory, one can imagine that for um, for every open set U in our manifold M, we can consider the space of solutions to the equations of motion in U. So, so solution of the Euler-Grange equations in U. And uh, this is some some set, uh <coughs> which uh, and we will. So this is the same thing as the critical locus of the uh, variational one form ds. And um, so when we have an inclusion of open sets, so if we have u inside of v inside of M open sets, then we can restrict solutions. So a solution on V restricts to a, a solution on U. And so in, in classical mechanics, we're told that, that the, the classical observables are um, are functions on solutions of the Euler-Grange equations. So functions on phase space. And <coughs> so this diagram here is going to induce a map in the opposite direction. So we will get a map on classical observables on U to classical observables on V by just taking functions on, on this diagram here. And if we have a, a configuration like this, so if we have an, oh an open set <coughs> W and inside of it we have 
open sets u and v. And similarly, we get a, um, <coughs> we can restrict solutions on w to solutions on u and v. And if u and v are disjoint, these are just, this is just going to be the direct product of the space of solutions on u and the space of solutions on v. So again, taking functions on this, we will get a map from ten the tensor product of observables, classical observables on, <coughs> on u and v to observables on on w okay and so in 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 the classical situation there's no reason why u and v have to be disjoint in space time right because in fact these uh this uh these spaces of classical observables are just uh these are th these form a kind of a co-sheaf of commutative algebras but if you're doing quantum field theory, you want these guys to be disjoint because we're told that it's performing simultaneous quantum measurements at the same point in space-time is somehow not, a, uh, is, is not allowed. Once you make a measurement, you change the system, and so the order in which you make the measurements does matter. And uh, so in, uh, in formulating the the notion of a factorization algebra, we will actually insist that that these sets are are disjoint. Okay, so this brings us to kind of a, a provisional definition of what a, a factorization algebra is. So, so here. <coughs> I will start, in, in general, you can work with just the topological space. So M will be a, a topological space. I will always work on, on something which is at least a, a manifold. And we will also fix a, a symmetric monoidal category, C, where this factorization algebra will take values. So. And for us, uh, the most important examples will be where C is just uh, 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 either uh, either graded vector spaces, so or chain complexes. So okay, with their with their standard tensor structure. Um, and so, so a, a factorization algebra F uh, on M with, uh, with values in this monoidal category C is the following data. So, <coughs> So the first part of, of this data is an assignment of an object of this category, so, so typically a vector space or a, or a chain complex, to each open set U in, in M. And um, whenever we have an inclusion of, of open sets, so then we need a, a structure map. So a map M U V from F of U to F of V for every inclusion U and V, like we saw on the for the for the classical observables over there. And 
whenever we have a collection of disjoint opens inside of another open, so let me just draw this. So suppose I have a bunch of open set, disjoint open sets U1 through UK inside of a bigger open set V. I will get a structure map, which I will denote by M U1 through UK into V of from the tensor product of of these guys into UV, or uh, F of V, I mean. All right, um, so and this assignment is required to satisfy certain natural compatibilities. So <coughs> And so rather than, than kind of enumerating all of these, the, these are <coughs> kind of geometrically obvious. So what you want is a certain type of associativity to hold. So for in, in this particular example, let's suppose that I have uh, said so two opens, V1 and V2, inside some open W, and then in turn I have smaller disjoints inside of these. So something like this, <coughs> then I can, there are several different compositions I could form in this picture, right? So in particular, I have a, I could just consider these three smallest opens in kind of a symmetric manner. and send the, uh, send the output into W, but it could also first combine these two things into V1, send this one to V2, and then combine those, and I want the answer to be the same. So, so in particular, I'd want this diagram to commute. Okay. Um, <coughs> and there's also, uh, so there are compatibilities and then there's a gluing axiom. <coughs> and as you can see, a, a factorization algebra is, 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 is kind of like a co-sheaf, but it's instead of assigning a direct sum to uh, two disjoint opens, it assigns a tensor product, and, but, but otherwise it's the, the flavor of a, of a co-sheaf, and we want some sort of gluing axiom for this thing. Um, just like sheaves have to satisfy, the, the, what differentiates a sheaf from a pre-sheaf is that a gluing axiom holds. Um, in this world, uh, you, you have to work with certain special types of covers. You can't just use sort of normal covers, and so I don't want to get into this, but um, roughly speaking, this, this gluing axiom says that um, f of u can be computed from a special type of cover of u. Okay. So uh, let me uh, let me look at a couple of examples.
So <coughs> let's take uh, let's take our our space to be just the the real line, and uh, let's pick an associative algebra. And then what we can do is we can assign to every connected open interval just the the algebra A. So we can define uh, f of u where u is some interval a b we can just set this equal to a and <coughs> if we have two disjoint intervals inside of a bigger interval we can simply use the multiplication on a to define the structure map so in this case uh, This would just send a b to the product a b, and this uh, you can see here that the this this factorization algebra has a has a local constancy property in the sense that well whenever um, whenever I have a, an inclusion of one open interval into another open interval I uh, I get an isomorphism right the the inclusion map induces an isomorphism. And in fact, one can easily show that such locally constant factorization algebras in, uh, in the category of vector spaces um, are just correspond to associative algebras. And if we, instead of just vector spaces, take um, differential graded vector spaces, then the corresponding answer is A infinity algebras. So such a locally constant factorization algebra valued in chain complexes is just an A-infinity algebra. Now, in, uh, in two dimensions, a certain class of these factorization algebras is essentially equivalent to vertex algebras, which we've seen in, uh, in earlier talks. So uh, if I take M to be the complex numbers, um, and I make certain assumptions, which I will sort of vaguely describe. So what I would want to relate this to vertex algebras is that F is uh, translation invariant, which just says that if I have an open set in the complex line and I translate it, then I should get an isomorphism of, uh, of the corresponding spaces of sections. And I, if I assume that, so there's a natural action of the circle acting on the complex on the complex numbers, right? And uh, I I would want f to be naturally acted on by by the circle as well. And moreover, I would want to assume that the um, that the structure maps. Uh, depend kind of holomorphically on the positions of the opens. So so this can be made precise in uh, in the language of operads, but um, Let's just draw a picture, and I think it's fairly clear what's what's meant by this. So, if we have if we have C, imagine that we have uh, a disk centered at the origin, and then we have another disk centered at some point Z. And then I can draw 
an even bigger disk also centered at the origin. Um, so let's, let me call this D0, DZ, and then I'll call the, the big disk D big. Then such a factorization algebra would give me a map from F of D0, DZ to F of D big. And now, because these things carry circle actions, I can decompose these vector spaces or chain complexes with respect to the circle action, right? So I get a grading. And so I can extract, using the circle action, a certain dense subspace um, of each complex. And in fact, because of translation invariance, it doesn't depend on which one of these disks I work with, so they, they're all isomorphic. So <coughs> we will get an induced map. So let me denote this, this dense subspace by, by V. So I would, I would obtain a map from V tensor V to V, but moreover, this map depends holomorphically on the position, right? This is one of our assumptions. So in fact, this is going to land in sort of Laurent series valued in V. And in, in fact, this is, so if we, if we uh, Z, is, Z is the position of this disk relative to the center. And so this is, uh, this is exactly, so if I, if I take some element A living in DZ, so I guess, So I'm assuming these A's and B's are actually living in these dense subspaces here. Or then this is just the usual vertex operator that we are familiar with from, <coughs> from the theory of vertex algebras. Okay? So under some natural assumptions on uh, factorization algebras in one complex dimension, we can extract from such an object a vertex algebra, and this, this will be a, a tool. So there's a kind of a generic construction of vertex or uh, factorization algebras in any dimension, which goes by the name of factorization envelopes. So Let me describe this. Um, so. so I should have said that this, this formalism is, is in some sense parallel or, or to the, the theory of, of chiral algebras as developed by, by Valence and Drinfeld. This is more of a sort of C infinity version of that of that formalism, but I think to, d to, day, to date uh, the kind of precise relationship between one theory and the other sort of remains to be worked out. And I, I have a lot of discussions with Raimundo about this. So if you, if you want to know more, you can talk to him. Um, so what's the, wh what's this factorization algebra construction? So we, uh, we start again with a manifold. And I'm going to take a, a sheaf of DGLAs. So, so differential graded Lie algebras on, on M. And there's some technical assumptions that should be made about this sheaf. I mean, you don't want just some, any old random sheaf of DGLAs on M. This should be something like a fine sheaf and then and maybe more precisely it should be something like uh, what, what people call a, a local a local Lie algebra so that structure maps should be or, or various Lie algebra operations and the differential should be given by by differential operators on on M um, and then we can take compactly supported sections of L
So once we take, once we pass to compactly supported sections, we get a co-sheaf. So. And let's just uh, make, make a very simple observation, which is that if, um, if we have a bunch of, of disjoint uh, open sets inside some bigger open set here, then the uh, And we get a map from the direct sum of these LC of UIs to the uh, LC of the union. And this in turn maps to LC of V. So we get a map from the direct sum to, to this thing and then we want to, so in a factorization algebra, we want to turn this into tensor products. And there's a natural functor that does that, which is to take the Chevalier-Allenberg chains. So, so apply the, the homological Chevalier-Allenberg complex. And then we will get a corresponding map from the tensor product of C lower star of LC of UI to to this thing. And this suggests that this should be a factorization algebra, at least once some of these gluing properties, which I never made explicit, are, are verified. So Um, that's right. Yeah, and or or uh, what I guess maybe might might be more interesting is is Duram forms valued in in the Lie algebra. Yeah. So um, so we get get a factorization algebra out of this, which I will denote by. FL, which assigns to you just this this Chevalier-Allenberg complex on on uh, on the open set. Okay. Um, all right. So here's an example of of this construction. So again, let's take M to be uh, the complex numbers and, or in fact, it doesn't matter. We can take a, a Riemann surface and let's fix uh, a Lie algebra with, uh, with an invariant bilinear form. Um, and then we can uh, we can uh, construct a, a sheaf of DGLAs as follows. So we will assign to you an open subset of this Riemann surface, just uh, just tensor G with the omega zero star forms on on sigma, um, and we can add a a central term to this piece so that the objective will be to recover something like the affine vacuum module of vertex algebra here. So this um, I should have 
Let me call this thing G sigma instead. So G sigma together with the del bar operator is a uh, uh, is a uh, is a sheaf of of DGLAs. And just to make the bracket explicit, I think it's pretty clear here, but um, so if I take x tensor some form alpha and y tensor some other form beta of type zero star, then this bracket looks like this. So x with y, I wedge the forms together, and then I want the, uh, then I want a co-cycle for the central piece, so I can integrate, so if this is, um <coughs> so I should have said here that um, X tensor alpha and Y tensor beta belong to G sigma of U, so where U is some open in the Riemann surface, and then I can integrate <coughs> del alpha wedge beta and apply the invariant form and get a number, okay? No, no, well, I mean, so in one, in one dimension, uh, that space is one dimensional, so I can... Um, I mean, even in that case, you would get as many copies of, of the one-dimensional thing as the number of connected components. Yeah. But here you don't. You, you're writing only one number. For you, this, even for you, this connected. Okay, so I mean, I, let's, let's assign this for the connected sets, and then I think it's clear what, what happens in general. But um, so anyway, the uh <coughs> so if we, if we consider the corresponding factorization algebra by applying the, the chevrolet Allenberg chains. Um, let's denote this thing by F sub G of U. This is so actually here I should have taken a uh, compactly supported section. So let, let me add the compact supported condition over here. Um, just to make sense of, of this integral even. Um, so we get, a, we get a factorization algebra, and so on, when the Riemann surface is just C, then this thing is, uh, is translation invariant and has the other properties that, that we would want. And so we can extract from it a, uh, a vertex algebra by first taking the cohomology. So if I if I take a if I take a disk and uh, I look at the sections of um, of this thing on a, on a disk, then I can extract from it a dense subspace as I described before. And what is this thing? This is just the, um, the affine, or the, depending on what your terminology is, this is the, univer or this is the uh, universal affine uh, vertex algebra at level C or the uh, the affine vacuum module. Okay. So this is uh, 
this is one example of, of this construction. Um, okay, so let me, uh, let me say something about how to do this from vibrations now. So, So everything I've 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 set up to now was was kind of due to uh, uh, Costello Gwilym. Uh I mean, again, this this bears uh, a lot of resemblance to to uh, things uh, done by Bellis and Drinfeld. So they, they certainly uh, deserve a lot of credit too. Um, so now I want to develop kind of a relative version of this envelope construction. So the setting here will be that uh, M will be a, a complex manifold, and I will take a, a locally trivial vibration over M, with uh, with some fiber. F. Okay, so everything is holomorphic. Everything is 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 complex. Um, and uh, once again, we will we will fix uh, a Lie algebra with an uh, invariant bilinear form. And then I'm going to start upstairs on on E. Uh, oh, I should have said that this. Uh, this is joint with uh, uh, Jackson Walters and he's a grad student at BU and Brian Williams. All right. So let's define a, a sheaf of DGLAs up on the total space E. So GE will be uh, G tensored with omega zero star of of E, just like in the in the previous construction, and uh, I will. So, so the objective here will be to obtain kind of vertex algebras that are attached to multi-loop analogs of of uh, of things such as toroidal algebras, or and this is this is kind of very generic. So we'll see that. Uh, you you get you get some sort of very general object out of this. Um, so here I have a sheaf of of DGLAs up on the total space E, and now in kind of the multi-loop world, you're centrally extending by some infinite dimensional thing. So we want to produce this um, this this uh, infinite dimensional central extension, which is going to occur here. And so I'm going to define a complex of sheaves up on E, which is the, the totalization of the double complex, which looks like this. So um, OK, so this is a double complex, right, because of course, each of these, each of these guys has a del bar operator inside, and I have a, I have a del operator which goes across here. Okay, so this is a double complex. I'm going to take its, the the total complex associated with, with this thing, and I can define a cocycle, with values. Um, in, this complex. And this this cocycle is the sum of two pieces. So I'm going to write it as phi of 
phi of 1 plus phi of 0. And these labels are meant to denote whether the answer lands in, in the zeroth piece or the, or the first piece. So phi 1 is defined, it sends x tensor alpha and y tensor beta. So again, this is, this is in, in G, and alpha is in omega zero star. It's going to send this to the bilinear pairing evaluated on x, y, and then beta del alpha minus alpha del beta. And phi naught well, is, a, is a kind of a three co-cycle. It sends a triple like this to um, and evaluate the, take the bracket and take the inner product with z and then wedge these forms together. So alpha, beta, gamma. And then the claim is that this is a, a co-cycle of total cohomological degree 2 in the, uh, the cohomological chevalier eilenberg complex of GE with values of KE. And so this defines an L infinity central extension of this, this DGLA G sub E. So in other words, if I add in this, this central term, this, so phi equips this thing with the structure of a of an L infinity algebra on E, or a sheaf of L infinity algebras on E. Now, ultimately, I want to get a factorization algebra on M, so we're going to push forward. So. So I don't know. Let me uh, let me call this L infinity thing right, G tilde of E. So we'll push it forward to to M, and then perform the factorization envelope construction downstairs. So um, <coughs> so we obtain a factorization algebra on M. Uh, which I will denote by FEG and what this assigns to you where U is now uh, an open subset of M is Chevalet chains on the compactly supported sections of this thing. Okay, so after all this, uh, all this running around, we have finally obtained a factorization algebra on the base. And when uh, the base is just the complex numbers, we can try to extract uh, a vertex algebra out of this thing. Mm -hmm. No, I'm I'm pushing forward this this L infinity thing, the uh, L infinity algebra. Yeah. Well, I d I defined I defined L as as the direct image of that thing. Okay. Yeah, you get the wrong thing. So so I mean, well, I should say if the fiber is compact, you get 
you get the right thing in some sense, but if the fiber is non-compact and that's the situation that's somehow more interesting, um, you, you will get the wrong thing. You'll get something commutative in, or too commutative. Yeah. Okay, so when, uh, when M is equal to C, and uh, we can just consider a trivial vibration. So, uh, so let's just take, pick your favorite complex manifold F as the fiber and just consider the, the trivial vibration. Um, in that case, this, this, this factorization algebra is, is again a translation invariant and has all the other um, has the circle action, etc. And so um, we can, so this, this implies in particular that um, there exists a, 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 a vertex algebra uh, which well, let me denote it as V, V F G, which exists as a dense subspace of the cohomology of this thing on a disk. Okay, and so you can ask what what this object is, <coughs> and it's easy to describe. So. Okay, so uh, we can, you can describe this vertex algebra as just a big induced module for a, for a certain uh, for a certain Lie algebra. So let me let me tell you what what this thing looks like. So first, um, let me define a certain ring or a, a C algebra. R F is going to be the the cohomology, the coherent cohomology uh, on the fiber of the structure sheaf. So basically just the cohomology of the sheaf of functions along the fiber uh, with tensored with Laurent polynomials, okay? So this variable Z can be thought of as a coordinate on the base of this, of this vibration. So this is a, just a, a ring, it's a C algebra. And then um, I can take this ring and tensor it with, with G. So, and this, um, so obviously this has a Lie algebra structure and it's, it's known that, that the universal central extension, at least when, when G is semi-simple, is by Kähler differentials of RF modulo exact ones. Okay, and because of the the presence of these Laurent polynomials, there is now uh, a, a certain subalgebra in here, which I will denote by GF plus, which is uh, those having non-negative z powers. So, so um, let me just let me just write. This is the subalgebra with z powers greater than or equal to zero. And so, so this. This has a piece not just from here, but of course here as well, because um, the we have one forms also that involve powers of z. So there is a there is a map from from Kähler differentials involving only z module exact ones into this thing. Okay, so it's roughly speaking half the center is 
is included in this GF plus. Okay, and then we can induce. So just as for in the kind of normal setting of vertex algebra vacuum modules. So VFG is just the induced representation from GF plus up to GF of the trivial representation, okay? And this has a structure of, of a vertex algebra. And in particular, if the fiber happens to be uh, an algebraic torus, so when F is C star to the R, then GF is, uh, this is the R plus one toroidal Lie algebra. So it's a central extension of Let me denote the other variables by W1 through WR because the Z is somehow privileged. That's the coordinate along the base. Um, <coughs> together with a, a, a central, kind of a large infinite dimensional central piece. So this is omega 1 of um, the R plus 1 torus. modulo exact forms, okay? And so, so we just get this big induced module, which from this construction is clear, has the structure of a vertex algebra. I mean, it doesn't have finite dimensional weight spaces or anything like that, but it's, right, so it's a good, uh, so what this construction produces is a, uh, is kind of a generic version of this thing. So it's, it's a, it's a family, Basically, you have to specialize the center to certain parameters to recover a specific central charge. So if over there, when I was talking about the, uh, the affine cuts Moody vacuum module, what that produces, or this construction produces, is a, um, so in, in, the, in the cuts Moody case, you, this, this um, where this construction, not, not the earlier one that I mentioned, but this one, uh, this produces VKG as a, as a CK module. So in other words, rather than acting by a number, the central term just acts by multiplication by K. So you can think of it as a, a family of vertex algebras over the affine line, or over A1, and by picking a value, modding out by the ideal K minus whatever, you get something specific. So the same thing is going to happen here. Okay, and let me just add, because I'm out of time, basically that, um, so one, one advantage of this, of this formalism is that you can easily calculate uh, factorization homology, which is the analog of, of covariance or conformal blocks. And so here, given an even non-trivial vibration, you can fairly manageably uh, calculate the, the global sections in terms of the, the serif spectral sequence. So you, you have some tools for, for, for doing the, the kind of global calculations. Okay, thank you. Well, you know what the uh, fine case is. Yeah. I can't produce irreducible quotients. No, only you can produce irreducible quotients. Yeah. The the what? No, 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 this is for in, in as soon as the fiber has positive dimension. So the only time it's finite dimensional is when the fiber is a point. And then it's the same story as with toroidal things, right? That the central extension is, is infinite dimensional the moment you have. 
Um, so I should have said that um, there was some earlier work on the kind of toroidal or vertex algebras associated to toroidal algebras by uh, by Billig, Berman, Schmigielski, and perhaps also you, right? And so I, I think so. Maybe I can ask you after w whether this is coincides with that construction or not. So, so H H zero. Will, so, I think I think H minus. I mean, there's a shift in grading. So, H naught will just be global quantum observables, and and then the, the the dual space of that can be used to build correlation functions. Whereas gauge symmetries are going to live in, I believe, H minus one. Uh, yeah, and and then the other cohomology groups are somehow higher symmetries that some more elaborate gauge theories you might be non-zero. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. 